Hello guys and welcome to game 4 from the Northampton Store Championship. In this round we have Brad on the left playing Greyjoy and uh, Reigns Castamir against Paul who we saw in the last round still playing Lannister Reigns. Uh, both these chaps are 2-1 and one, and a win puts them in a good, shout, good chance of making the cut. So this is a, a bit of a win, win in your in game hopefully for both of them. Uh, Brad is uh, supposed to be a bit of a newer player it, um, in the sort of town across from me. I played him a fair bit. He's getting a lot better, and he's really starting to understand the game. Uh, he particularly likes Greyjoy. Um, he's actually at the store championship I was at this weekend. Um, playing Greyjoy, uh, Rains, uh, was it Red Door doing Dragon God? So we have Cersei into with Tower of the Hand and um, Mountains of the Moon. Uh, duped out of the hand. Uh, against Victorian, um, the uh, uh, Fishmonger, and a Rose Road. Still playing jumpy. Jumpy kind of stuff. <laughs> Maybe. So we interested to see if Brad decides to march here on turn one. Get rid of the uh, get rid of Cersei. She can do a lot of damage to Greyjoy. Maybe not so much a greater range deck. Uh, depends, obviously, because you do have some intrigue icons. But it'd be interesting to see if he does have um, does decide to do that. We have trading into time of plenty. So that's not. I don't think that's a horrendous. Um, that's a horrendous match uh, choice. So you get to choose who goes first, and. Um, you also get an extra card to put out of all your gold. And it's interesting, Brad decided to go second. We have a Rose Road. We have a Deep for Cersei, that's uh, an alt art. Uh, unofficial one, of course. It'd be interesting if, um, to ask Paul if he actually had set, uh, that dupe in hand and did want to put it out in case you got marched. You got Crescent, so the intrigue, uh, intrigue heavy nature of this is uh, going to be quite apparent. He's going to sit on six gold. So I think maybe a hound, maybe burn men. Oh, Brad, just double checking the cards. As you always hear me say, if you're not sure on a card, it's always worth just picking up, having a quick read. Um, even if you're fairly sure on cards, sometimes it's worth just double checking the wording just to see when things interact. So 11 gold here for Brad. I have an, I have an eye for these scouts and a sea stone chair. Sea uh, chair, sea tower. We have a deep for Victorian. Yep, put on the right one. Yep. Uh, Alright, and Always pay for newly made lord. It's going to blow up the mountains of the moon. Probably would have gone for the. Um, probably would have gone for uh, the um, hand of the, uh, the tower of the hand, but uh, obviously with the deep, it's, that seems less worthwhile. And we've got Dagma, who's potentially going to go and steal that. And Dagma's got Corsair's Dirk. That's a card I love to see. I think it's a very underrated card. Now, Brad here is lacking entry icons, which 
suppose I think it might be worthwhile going first. Uh, we'll see. I mean, Dagmar potentially attacking for nine would have been pretty horrific for uh, for Paul. So we have a big entry coming in here for seven. Uh, six, sorry. Which looks like it's going to be unopposed. I'm interested to see what um, I imagine Paul's going to flip into uh, filthy accusations here. Canter there definitely is a burn man in hand. Little fingers meddling. So I think we're about to see a uh, we're about to see a trial by combat. Yeah, indeed, there's a trial by combat, which. Two for Berman to come in. And paying three for Crow Killers. So now Brad can't really let this go. Um, he, Brad has to contest this. So we've got military here for six. Oh, five, sorry. So that does mean. That it does mean Victorian can defend with. Uh, def Brad defense for six, so yeah, that did seem like an odd choice there, because obviously, because with this with the uh, scout ship. You can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to wipe Brad's board, and that could have been pretty horrific there for Brad. I think Dagman just now comes. Dagman comes in for military. And then claim replacement, it's got to be still that tower of the hand. Yeah, had to be done. You have to get get, get taking that away from. Um, uh, so that yeah, that's um, had to be taking that just to just to slow Brad down. That means you can't keep doing the whole winning intrigue, bouncing stuff back. And dominance goes to dominance goes to Brad. So that's six one after turn one. Be interesting to see if Paul decides to Valor here to try and get rid of the um, Greyjoy characters, knowing that Cersei's got a dupe. We've got marched into Counting Coppers. So Dagmar's going to disappear, having done his job. And the bear men are going to disappear. And 
So Brad's going to be able to repopulate his board pretty easily here, so he shouldn't have to worry too much about another uh, trial by combat or any other shenanigans. Five gold from five gold from pool. Puts down a Western fiefdoms. We have the hound put into play. It's sitting on three gold. So it doesn't look like he's going to be able to replay out the hound. Um, so Brad here got getting two, um, putting his another Cito out, putting out then putting out media, putting out two more um, fishmongers. And it sounds like Paul's made a mistake. And looks like this is going to be Asher. And we've got Asher out. So, um, Brad here keeping up the pressure. No gold left, but. Paul saying they should have played another character and apparently miscalculated the gold. So we have entry coming in from Cersei, which goes unopposed. And he's going to take the two claim. And we get a Risen and a Great Hall. The uh, Stone Crows there after you win a challenge in which Stone Crows are attacking. Discard one gold from them to, uh, to, uh, to have the losing opponent choose and kill a defending character. So if you don't defend, they can't actually trigger. Another Stone Crows comes in, I guess, to make sure. Okay. So the Stone Crows come in and then get Iron. Banked. Oh, the and a put to the sword is used. I guess he really wanted to make sure the put to the sword went through. And no risen to save. Is that taken out from intrigue? And then claim is going to be the um, one of the island fishmongers. Two military is unopposed, and claim is the deep of Cersei, and power, which goes unopposed, and claim putting a, a Brad up to uh, five. Brad's going to win. Dom getting up to six. <laughs> and we're on to round three. That's why they're choosing plots here, guys. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. If you are interested in helping the channel, help me uh, get out better, better looking content and improve the equipment, please do check the description below to follow the link. Um, any and all help would be appreciated. No 
I would say. We're definitely seeing Brad here doing. Uh, sorry, Brad. Uh, Pool's definitely doing a lot more tricks than ice. Uh, the, the game we saw previously. He's got Noble Cause into barring the gates. Maybe a turn too late for that one. <laughs> So Brad's decided to go first this turn. <laughs> Two sea towers and the fishmongers knelt. So we've got six cost character, uh, which is uh, Core Balon. I know he's got Corsair's Dirk in hand. I'd be it might be tempted to put that on uh, on Balon. Make strength seven. It's quite hard to defend against him then. But now we're going to free from Mini Fion. Uh, Mini Fion. Um, Mini Balon. And they go left. Tywin hits the board. Costing four thanks to reduction for the Western Fiefdoms. And Paul's going to sit on two gold. So, if it's me, I might do a power challenge with Asher stealthing past um, stealthing past Tywin. See what happens. So we have a military from Balon, which goes unopposed. Claims going to be the Stone Crows works for it. Probably is the worst card there. And Renowned and Balon. You've got Power Challenge from Fion, which is unopposed. Yeah. Unopposed in Claim, putting Brad up to 10. And he can actually still defend the military or power with Asher against Balon. Against them, and against. Um, Against Tywin. So the 35 minute warning there and we've just got a massive entry coming in here from from both uh, which I imagine is going to go into either we going to power behind the throne And we're going to have power behind the throne. Okay, uh, yeah, Chan's obviously on the We've got two claim here, so Brad's hemorrhaging even more cards. And we have Corsair's Dark, and we do not sow. So power here from um, power yeah. uh, which actually so he can't actually fully oppose. I do apologise. I made a mistake earlier. 
can only get up to eight. So uh, power to, power claim is one. Dom goes to pool, so it's now nine six to Brad. I go to the fourth plots and we have Rise of the Kraken into First Snow of Winter. So, so we're going to see Little Theon and uh, the, and the uh, fish, Fishmonger disappear for Brad. Uh, Dee Fields now, he's going to save from first now. I've got Flea Bottom brought up. So, no injury goals, but I'm not 100% sure that's going to matter unless Brad can get out something fairly good to stop Fion. Uh, Fion just goes in and gets four power by himself. Oh, yeah, one of my favourites, uh, Ulf. Who gets, a high, gets more strength whenever another. Uh, gets, a, gets a strength boost for every. Um, every clansman character comes in to, comes into play. Up to three times a phase. So he could be a potential good beat six to play against Balon. We've got sitting on four gold, so we imagine there's going to be some more clansmen jumping in. But I still think Brad can see it out this turn. Uh, the Chud obviously can come in with Flea Bottom. Oh no, can't, sorry. Uh, the Duper Fion can come in with Flea Bottom, though. I don't think we've seen any other um, cheap characters hit the discard pile. So, power from Fion, which goes unopposed, and that's going to be. So you get two power from interrupt and claim two. Meaning Brad just needs two more power to win the game. So can Pulse do this? He's just he needs to get to strength nine to resolve this from being unopposed. So three gold spent. No. So, crow kill. So, iron. So the stone. Um, stone crows, was it? Come in, and now Ulf is strength seven. A widow's whale here means he could defend.
on a Oh, and Paul Trillers, he can't actually defend the challenge, so that's it, Brad wins. And um, and with that, I say, uh, with that we see Brad does make the cut, he gets to 3-1, and one. he's got a chance. There will unfortunately be five people with a good enough record in seeing a top four. But re good, very good game there, guys, thanks for letting me record, and uh, please come back next time for the top four, which will see myself versus Ryan.